RuneScape can often be referred to as a second monitor game, and it's a great game to play when you're doing other things, as there's a whole lot that you can do to make progress on your account when not actively playing. In fact, I've basically spent the last two months playing AFK while I grind away the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so I like my AFK to require no inputs for as long as possible. And today, I want to go through the most AFK things that you can do on your account. So whether you're playing another game, walking away from your computer for an extended time, or working, you can still make gains on your account. Let's start this video with what I mentioned in my last video and what I personally did to get 120 thieving. It is one of the most AFK thieving methods and that is Desert Bandits. In order to have this work, the only real requirement is to have 99 thieving in order to have the perk that note all your pickpocketed items. However, in order to get the most benefit from this, you will also want the Master Camouflage Outfit to get a 7% double pickpocket chance, the Sticky Fingers Relic Power to get 50% faster pickpocketing speed, giving you 50% more XP, and a full completion of the Memorial of Guthix minigame with an additional charge of the Time Engram, granting you a buff to get memory shards from pickpocketing. When you have all these items and buffs, you want to go over to the Desert Lodestone and head northwest to the Desert Bandit Camp and simply pickpocket the bandits. With all these buffs, you will get a total of about 350,000 thieving XP per an hour, and the memory shards that we mentioned can be used for a slew of divination products but my personal favorite is to turn them into porter charges. Going from 99 to 120 with this method will allow you to obtain around 50,000 porter charges without doing anything. A bit of a side note is you can actually do this with any NPC which has a 100% success rate such as druids at the Garden of Crid or the Menophyte Marketeers. Next up, we have another skilling method and that is mining corrupted ore in Treyharn. Prior to the mining and smithing rework, these rocks would deplete upon 70 successful mines, making them fairly AFK. However, since the mining and smithing rework, they no longer deplete. They also don't function like the core ores do, as there is no punishment for losing stamina. Before continuing, I do want to state that you can make any rock work like this with minimal penalties via a combination of porters, a perfect juju mining potion, and stone spirits. But as I am an iron man, I don't want to use one of these supplies, so I like going for sarin stones. In order to do this, you only need a pickaxe and level 89 mining, as well as having Priftinus unlocked. However, you can see additional benefits by using a gargoyle familiar for a plus 12 mining boost, the golem outfit for multiple benefits and a mix of the brooch of the gods or a big book and a grace of the elves. You can also add a tagus core hammer to the mix which will increase your critical chance. However, as far as I know, it does not provide death spore arrow tips. However, I cannot confirm or deny that as I don't have one and I am an iron man. While mining the corrupted ore from Staring Stones, you can expect anywhere from 130 to 200,000 mining experience per an hour depending on buffs and levels. This is another activity that you can do for the duration of the lobby timer. However, as this is a gathering skill, I would also recommend having Alt-1 set up if you have a Big Book, a Brooch of the Gods, or a Grace of the Elves to check on your Saren Spirits, Blessing of Gods, or a Catalyst of Alterations. Up next is the Dream of Aya Skilling, requiring the Extinction Quest and supplies from your Anachronia base camp. Unfortunately, what that means is that this method is a time-locked training method, as we need to have our resources from the base camp. The skills we can train are Herb Lore, Fishing, Fletching, Hunter, Construction, and Crafting. Each skilling station can hold a total of 350,000 experience stored and you use that XP in roughly one hour. So assuming each area is maxed, you can have a total of 6 full hours of AFK time. XP is not our only benefit from this, as we can get food for your ranch out of time animals, laboratory relics for cash or invention components, all the animals for Ranch at a time, all the base camp resources including the upgrade items, and it is also the most reliable way to get bone blowpipe pieces. This is also the only way to unlock the Necklace of Salamancy, a best in slot amulet for killing dinosaurs which buffs drop rates and increases damage dealt to dinosaurs. Up next we have using cleansing crystals on the corrupted Saren Stone in the Heffen District with the Turin Quiver 3 or 4 equipped. This is because when using these crystals with the quiver equipped, you will use the following one once you complete the ritual. In order to do this, all you really need is to have access to Perfectness and the quiver. However, to get the most out of this method, you'll also want a perfect juju prayer potion or a perfect plus for an additional 5% experience, the first age outfit for another 6% experience, 
and activating a version of Salvation, Corruption, or the Harmony Auras for even more XP. And to make this fully AFK for the durational lobby tire, you will indeed need the Quiver. Before going on and talking about this method, I would like to state that I would not recommend anyone doing this as it's a very cost ineffective method for training prayer. However, it is fully AFKable. In order to do this, you simply need to purchase a set of cleansing crystals from the Heffen monks and click the corrupted Saren stone in the Heffen Cathedral. These crystals buy for a whopping 110,000 coins a pop, and while doing this, you will gain 284,000 prayer XP per an hour, or 341,000 XP on Heffen hours. Just like all the other methods listed so far, you'll be able to AFK this for the entire duration of the lobby timer, with only your limiting factor being the amount of crystals in your inventory. There's also a fun mechanic you can do with the cleansing crystals, and if you're interested in knowing what that is, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I have a fun video planned for that. Moving on from the cleansing crystals, we have the newest fully AFK activity, which is fishing raw ghostly souls in the city of Um. Unlike normal fishing spots, the raw ghostly soul spot does not ever deplete or move, meaning the only thing to stop you from fishing is filling up your inventory. There's two ways that you can go about stopping this but only one that I would recommend. The first way to stop it is pretty obvious and that's using signs of the porter to automatically transport your resources to the bank. However, what I would recommend is to have a full shark outfit set and set it up to consume fish. In order to make this method work, you'll obviously need a fishing rod and some fishing bait unless you have the relevant prawn perk, as well as having a shark outfit set to consume. In order to fish these, you will need a minimum of 66 fishing. The XP rates will vary greatly based on level and it can be as low as 60,000 fishing XP per an hour at 66, but it can go as high as 120,000 fishing XP per an hour at 99 with all the best boosts active. Continuing on, we have one of my soon to be go to AFKs, which is AFK in combat with permanent aggressiveness monsters. This includes the wildlife in Apatol while you do not have a Gree Gree, the soldiers in the Black Knight catacombs without elite black armor or Dagon High robes, Revenants without the 4 and 3 brace. Monsters in the God Wars dungeon without the God items, or ravenous ghouls while wearing any blood essence, or my personal favorite, Vyres, without using the Darkmire outfit or the House Draken outfit. The only requirement to be able to AFK combat is simple, be able to survive. However, if you're looking for permanent AFK ability, meaning clicking one time every 15 minutes, I would really really recommend against this. As many of these, you'd want to at least loot the drops that you are getting. Next up, we have a smithing method. When you smelt an item, you end up with an unfinished smithing item in your backpack, which you can actually stop the smithing process and make another unfinished item. You can repeat this process until you have a full inventory of unfinished items and then begin the smithing. Once you've finished smithing one of the set of items, your character will smith until all the items in your inventory are complete. You can do this at any level, however there's a few unlocks that I would recommend getting in order to do it more effectively. The first unlock that I would recommend would be the smithing auto heater which can be purchased for 4000 dungeoneering tokens. What this item does is it reheats your item when it reaches a heat level of 0% and for the cost of 5 coal it sets that heat back up to 30%. The reason I would recommend getting this is when your items end up being cooled down and have 0% heat, you will basically be getting 0 XP and won't be making much progress on making your item. You can also upgrade the smithing auto heater to the advanced auto heater for 40,000 dungeoneering tokens, which gives you the option to use 50 coal to boost it to 60% heat. Also, while not 100% necessary, I would also recommend having access to the curse Super Heat Form at level 91 prayer, which will make your heat level act as a higher level, meaning at medium heat, your item will be smithed at high heat rates, and while at low heat, your item will be smithed at medium heat rates. To counteract the prayer drain, there's a couple other unlocks that you can use, such as the Orthon Furnace Core, which will make the prayer cost zero prayer points. Or you can also use a combination of a Grace of the Elves and an Elven Ritual Shard with the very occasional use of a Prayer Renewal or Prayer Restoration Potion. The next AFK we're going to talk about is AFKing minigames for Thaler. There's a plethora of games that can be AFKed, but it would take far too long to talk about them all. So in the description box below, I'm going to provide a link to a wiki page talking about this. 
but the general idea is to AFK a minigame, ideally one that's on spotlight, to gain Thaler and get the minigame rewards in that fashion. Our final big AFK method that we're going to be discussing today is construction via Fort Ferenthry. Many of the higher tier construction items, such as the tier 3 buildings, require a vast amount of time and items in order to construct. In fact, according to the wiki, the tier 3 kitchen takes a minimum of 17 minutes to build, and will take even longer without entering any inputs, which we may actually want in order to increase our AFK time. In order to do this, however, we would be required to have the building materials and have the level to actually build the building. But once we have those things, we can head to the bench, activate the blueprint, get to building, and walk away from your computer. There are a few more activities which you can fully AFK, such as the manual auto cycles found in the Golden Throne Room, mining shooting stars, and fishing at the swarm, but as the player cannot control when they can do these, or they don't have an unlimited time to be able to do these, I chose not to talk about them. But in either case, that's my list of the most AFK activities you can do in RS. Did I miss anything else that you can fully AFK for the lobby timer? Which one of these would you do? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. While you're there, be sure to hit that like button, and if you like my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.